famous method actors I want to talk about for a moment that you might have heard of, and then we'll come back and talk about method acting. You might have heard of actors like Marlon Brando, who's in the picture there, or Robert De Niro, Sally Field, Paul Newman, Jack Nicholson, and even Marilyn Monroe. These were all actors who considered themselves method actors. And now for a moment I want to talk about, and this is important, so be sure you're paying attention, uh, the difference between the Stanislavski system and method acting. Method acting, which a lot of us may have heard that term tossed around, arose during uh, about the 1930s, was really coming to prominence, and into the 1950s. That was glory, it's heyday, the 1950s, that's Marlon Brando there in the 1950s in a production of Tennessee Williams Streetcar Named Desire, famous line where he yells for his wife, he yells, Stella, Stella. So if you haven't seen A Streetcar Named Desire, it's a fabulous film of a fabulous play. Tennessee Williams, one of my favorite playwrights. Well, this group of actors decided in the 1930s, and this is an American system, that they wanted to recreate Stanislavski's system of actor training. The problem was that when Stanislavski wrote his system of actor training, he was writing in the Soviet Union, in Russia at that time, around the turn into the 20th century, and he was writing in Russian. Well, it took some time for his system to come over to the United States. Later, Stanislavski himself and some of his actors travel to the U.S., and a lot of actors see them, but that's not until a bit later. So what happens is his first book is translated, his book An Actor Prepares. That's his first book. He writes three books in this system, and he has some other books as well, but these are the three I'll talk about. An Actor Prepares... becoming a character and creating a role. So they go A, B, C. An actor prepares becoming a character, creating a role. And in An Actor Prepares, he talks a lot about developing the character psychologically. What does this person want? And what are their favorite ice cream flavors? You should know everything about the character that you're playing. Um, what was his relationship like with his mother when he was a kid? All of that stuff. So a lot of psychological development. It's not really until his third book that he starts to talk about technique, how you speak on stage, how you move on stage, how you train your body as an actor. So what starts to happen is that in, in the 1930s, these actors in the U.S. get a hold of this first book and, and start to understand Stanislavski's system as something that's very psychological and that's motivated primarily by the psychology of the character. And they want to be as realistic as possible. Method acting can lead to very, very good work, and it can lead to a lot of indulgence by actors as well. Method actors will often stay in character. So if you have a, an actor who's doing a film, they may uh, go home from that film still pretending to be the character. They may stay in, in character for the entire time that they're filming, or perhaps some of them, different people do different things. So some of them will just stay in character on the set. Some of them will take it home with them. Some of them will kind of isolate themselves. So method actors get this reputation for being kind of weird and carrying their work home with them. Later, Stanislavski kind of said, no, no, drop it at the door, you know? It's like a coat you put on when you come into the rehearsal process, and then you take it off and go home. But everybody works differently. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying method acting is good and the Stanislavski system is, is or method acting is bad and the Stanislavski system is good. It's just that there's a little bit two different things. Your book even leads you to believe that they're the same thing, but they're not. Method acting is the American version of the Stanislavski system, and in many ways, it's what we call a bastardization of the Stanislavski system. It's not really complete and accurate, but it did lots of good things for lots of actors. So later, uh, there's a big rift in the American acting community when some American actors actually go over to Stanislavski and ask him what he meant. He's a very old man by this time, and he clarifies some of these things, and those actors come back and, and tell the other people, and there's a huge rift in the acting community because you're basically coming back and saying, no, you're wrong. Here's what the great man said, the great guru of acting said about this. 
So that, that was a pretty um, dramatic moment in the history of acting. Here's a method acting exercise as an example. Two method acting exercises here. A sense memory exercise and memory of emotion, or what we might call emotional recall. You'll hear it referred to both ways. First, when we look at sense memory, we have something called the coffee cup exercise. And this was an exercise in which the actor would first, it's an observation exercise, essentially. You take a coffee cup, it's warm, it's full of coffee, it's steaming, it smells good. You hold it, you feel the weight, you smell it, you really get all of your senses into this. You taste the coffee, anything you can do to involve your physical senses. Then you put the coffee cup down and you try to recreate that sensation, that experience, just miming it, just holding the coffee cup. What is the shape? What is the weight? What does the porcelain feel like against your, your hand? Um, what temperature is this? Is it burning you? How does that feel? Is there steam rising off of the top of the cup of coffee? Does it smell good? all of those things. So you try to observe that and then you try to replicate it. In memory of emotion or emotional recall, you choose an experience that was highly em emotional for you and then recall the surroundings that that experience happened in in detail as possible. Who was present? What were the sounds, the smells, the tastes, the sights? What were you wearing? What was the quality of the light like? And many years ago, I did this exercise as, you know, I was remembering, I was young at the time, and so a few years before that, I had, had my grandmother had died, and I'd been to her funeral, and so I re was remembering that and bringing that up. And this can be very emotional. You know, think about times in your life, maybe some of you have, have just you've started to think about something bad that has happened to you and the, the emotion that that brings up for you. Stanislavski felt about emotion that you couldn't approach it directly. You had to get at it. You had to use conscious means through these exercises to get at what was really something coming from your subconscious. That you couldn't directly sit around and say, I want to be angry or I want to be sad. But there were things you could do to mind emotions. So he wasn't against emotion. The actor had to, that's one reason you have to be physically free, because if you have a lot of tension, a lot of times what we're doing with that tension is cutting off our emotions. So we try, we're trying not to be upset about something, so we, we don't breathe and we hold our breath and we get tension in our shoulders and we, we try to keep it all together all day long, right? And Stanislavski said it's that very act of keeping it all together that can interfere with the actor's process. And again, this might be one reason why actors get reputations as crazy, crazy emotional people, because they want to keep themselves primed to have that emotion be able to flow through them. And so they're a little more emotional in some senses than other people because they don't work as hard to shut it off as most people do. And, you know, in some professions, you really need to shut it off. But in acting, you need to find ways to turn it on without pushing it, without mugging, and without indicating what the emotion is, but to really have that emotion uh, come up in you. 